Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Stacy. This is my June reading wrap up. I only completed four books in June. There were some other books that I started that I think I'm going to make a video like mid July and talk about those and maybe break up July into two videos. So right now it's just four books. Um, the first one that I read was Veiled in Smoke by Jocelyn Green. That is book one of the Windy City Saga series. I think that's what it's called. And so all the books in that series take place in Chicago. This first one is set during the time period of the Great Chicago Fire. And it is about... I'm sorry, I am so distracted. My daughter recently bought a bird feeder and it's hanging up like a few feet away from me. And there is a battle between the squirrels and the birds <laughs> constantly. I don't know if you can hear them, but the birds are losing their minds at the squirrels right now. And it's very distracting. Anyway, the book um, is about two sisters who live with their father. The father was captured and put into prison in Andersonville, which is famous for being a really horrific prison camp. And he was tortured in that camp. And when the war was over, he went back home to live with his daughters. Now he has PTSD and he has hallucinations and um, the daughters uh, are struggling trying to take care of him. Then the fire happens and lots of horrible things go down. I don't wanna, you know, give away spoilers or anything, but I do wanna mention that the book is incredibly well researched and Jocelyn Green does such a great job at um, representing historical um, facts, places, people. Oh my gosh, do you see these birds? <laughs> They're going crazy. Um, anyway, Jocelyn Green is an amazing writer and she writes to where you feel like you're there in the story which is great but for me with this book it was particularly difficult because the father ends up in an asylum and uh, my mom had schizophrenia and spent a large part of my childhood in mental institutions and so anything dealing with asylums and mental doctors and things like that are, are just really hard for me to um, read so those so those parts were kind of traumatic <laughs> to say the least um, especially if you were put into an asylum back then it was really really bad and there are there is details of how he was treated while he was in there there was a lot of medical mistreatment and so if you have issues with that stuff as well, I wouldn't really recommend this book. Um, but if you're okay with all that, this book was pretty outstanding. It was high in faith content and I learned a lot. The next book I finished was called Faithfully Different, Regaining Biblical Clarity in a Secular World. And I read this with two other um, booktubers, uh, Christina, Christina Shelves, and Catherine Clark. I will leave their information down below because they're fantastic ladies. Um, they asked me if I wanted to join in in their um, read through of this book. And I'm so glad because I learned a lot from this. She was able to put words to a lot of the things that I was feeling. And she gave um, really great statistics, church membership, how Christians view the Bible, um, how Christians see the rest of the world and politics. And she just gave really great statistics. And I was really shocked by the amount of um, professing Christians, church going Christians who don't necessarily believe the Bible is the word of God. Natasha Crane is a no nonsense um, conservative Christian. So if you're interested in a really good uh, nonfiction Christian read, I would pick that up and I would definitely read more from her. I actually do have another book written by her and I think it's called um, What What to Teach Your Kids About Jesus. I think that's the name of it. I haven't read it yet because when I got it, I won it in a giveaway. And when I got it, my kids are like 18. So I feel like it's probably geared to more geared towards smaller kids, but I bet I could get a lot out of it if I actually picked it up. Uh, the next book that I read was not Christian fiction, 
After reading Veiled in Smoke, I wanted something that was pretty light and easy um, to read. So I picked up Gentleman Jim by Mimi Matthews. Uh, I have read two of her other books. She's a, I think she's a secular author, but writes clean books. I'm not entirely sure. So if you know more about Mimi Matthews, leave that down below. Um, but I've read two of her other books and I really did like them, especially one called John Eyre, which was supposed to be kind of a Jane Eyre retelling. And this book was historical fiction and it was described like if you like Jane Austen type of stuff, you would like this. Should have been telling to me because I, I'm not a big Jane Austen fan. It's about um, a young girl who lives on like an estate in England. Her family has money and her and I think he's like the stable boy. Um, they fall in love and he gets accused of stealing and then he leaves. So he disappears for years and she's still in love with him. So she puts off marrying anyone else in the hopes that he will come back. Um, I guess that's about all I can say before there's any spoilers, but this book was okay. It definitely was much lighter than Veiled in Smoke. So it did get points for that. Uh, but I just didn't really care a whole lot about these characters. I wasn't really invested. There was a lot more, what's a good way to say this? Making out, I guess, is what you would say. I don't know. I feel so awkward <laughs> right now. Uh, there was definitely more scenes in this book of that kind of nature, like boy-girl nature, that I'm used to because I've been reading so much just straight Christian fiction that now I'm kind of like, huh, what's this doing in there? That's, I don't like that so much. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I gave it three stars because it's, it's okay. And the last book that I finished was called Counted with the Stars by Connell and Cassette. This is book one in her Out of Egypt series. I actually read uh, her series that comes after this one, and that's called the Cities of Refuge series. And I read those books where I should have read these books, the Out of Egypt books first, uh, because I think it all kind of goes together in like a long storyline, but it's okay. But this isn't about an Egyptian girl whose father was rich, like a rich merchant, and his ships go down at sea, loses all his money, and he ends up having to sell his daughter to another Egyptian family. And so she's used to kind of being treated like a princess. And then now she is a household slave. And during this time is when Moses comes back um, from Medina, Medea, where was he? It's a place that sounds like that. I know the answer to this, but he comes back to Egypt and um, he, you know, starts telling Pharaoh to let the people go. And then the plagues start. And the scenes with the plagues just blew my mind. Um, they were so well written. It was like being there with p these people as they were experiencing the plagues. It was insane. Um, and so it goes through that and it goes through the people leaving Egypt. So, so this story is about fictional characters who lived through these things, although there is small mention of Moses, like more towards the end. Um, but the story is not about Moses at all. If you don't like biblical fiction with real biblical characters, I would still read these books because he's such a small mention at the end. Um, uh, but yeah, I just, I love Connell and Cassette. I think she is such a phenomenal author and she really makes the Bible come to life. And of course, there's a lot of faith in this book as well. So definitely recommend her. All right, guys, that's all I've got for my June reads. Like I said, I will do another video in July, like mid-July for the stuff that I'm almost finished with or I just finished. I think today is the seventh already. Can you believe that? It's already the seventh. Like what? Anyway, that is all that I've got. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see y'all later. Bye.